Hello and welcome to PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. My name is Leo Green. Today we're going to continue with Surface Modeling Techniques Part 2. Last time we talked about bringing in curves, using those curves, adjusting those curves, and then uh, developing surface geometry with respect to those curves with respect to the hub, the hub that develops or that is of the wheel for this turbine wheel. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to move forward with the blade itself. We've got the center line curves top and bottom so what we'll do is make a boundary blend that just runs from one of these curves to the other, middle mouse, and that's going to give us our center line geometry. But what we need is both a thickness top and bottom. We could use this surface edit simply to thicken and we can thicken it um, one side of the geometry, the other side of the geometry, or even down the middle. If our blade was uniform in thickness, I might even use this. But most of the time, we have more to compensate for. Specifically, what we want is a varying thickness from tip to root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the surface, and then I'm going to pick the edge of the surface, and then I'm going to go to Sweep. Right-click, Sketch, Right click again for a line. I'm just going to put a line in here and it, it'll come up with its own number. I might use, say, 02 in this case. And that gives me a nice surface, but because I chose the edge of the center line plane surface, this surface remains normal to that ruled surface. Okay, now here's a bit of a shortcut for you. I've got that feature selected. Control C and again paste special where I don't want a dependent copy but I'll use the advanced reference configuration and I'll just simply choose the other side of the same boundary blend. Copied the surface or copy the surface feature in a different place. Right click edit because I want this one to be maybe 090. Control G and now I've got what might be the root thickness. Okay. Again, hit the boundary blend, pick the root of this one, root of that one, middle mouse, good. Boundary blend, root, and root, middle mouse. So if I shade now, you see I've got a very nice trapezoidal cantilever beam, if you will, that is the boundary or, or is the blade. Now, what about the leading edge? Well, we've got the center of that leading edge with the center line plane. But where does that, or how does that blend back? Here's kind of a neat little trick. If I pick this surface, then pick the edge of the surface, I can edit, extend. Now you've probably, you probably know that you can extend outward, but did you know that you could extend shorter also? What's more is I can right click here and add a second and even third um, offset value. Drag these points around. I might want this to be 02 and I might want this one to be the 09. So when I call that done, I've now essentially trimmed it, but I've trimmed it back in a parametric way. This feature can also be copied, so Control C, Paste Special, Independent, where I'm going to choose an alternate boundary, in this case that one, and then the vertex edge will be this one, and then the, vert the other vertex edge, this one, and we have now copied that extend feature. I'll go to wireframe now, and let's now put in that leading edge. Boundary blend from this edge around through the middle, and to that second edge. Well, that gives us a very nice surface, but what if we want a tangent? That's what these balls are for. Right click allows me to make that tangent to the adjacent edge or even curvature continuous to that edge. I'll shade that now too, and you'll see how nice that blends around the corner. But before I leave this feature, let me show you a couple other things. If I go to the constraints, you can see I've added the curvature, but there's a box here where I can display 
drag handles. And you see how I've got a little drag handle here, and I can pull that out or I can type in a number. Let's make that just one and a half. So I can change the nature of that, that surface as it comes out and around. Easy. Straightforward. All right. Go back to wireframe. What is the significance of the different edge colors? You see this kind of a light purple and a dark purple. All the light purple edges are one-sided edges. That means there's a surface on one side of that edge. Whereas the dark purple are two-sided edges. That is an edge that has a surface on both sides of it. All solid models are made up of two-sided edges. And so ultimately we're going to have to join these together. Now, let's do that with the blade geometry. I'll pick one of these surfaces. Control key down, we'll pick up another another surface and we'll go then to the merge icon or merge tool. That's going to join those two together. If I hold the control key down, I can pick up more surfaces and more and more and more and so on. So with one merge feature, I can join many different surfaces. And you'll notice now that that edge is not two one-sided edges. It is now one two-sided edge, the edge that makes up solids. All right, now if I shade this, you'll see that it doesn't touch the hub surface. You see how it doesn't touch that? So we need to extend it in order to get it to connect. So I'll pick this new quilt, pick its edge, go to edit and extend. That's fine. Probably don't need it that far. If I hold the shift key down, I can pick up more edges and extend more at the same time. And that ought to get me connected to the hub, but what about this back edge? We might have to go even further here. So why don't I pick up this one? And I probably won't need this, the one on the uh, on the near side. Oh, well, maybe. Let's pick it anyway. Middle mouse. And I've got an extended surface quilt. So now if I pick that quilt, control key pick the hub quilt, and merge those two, it now has joined them. If I go to wireframe, you'll see it's a nice purple edge. If I go to shade, you can see, obviously, that it is joined. Well, the joined edge makes a very convenient edge for making rounds. So, let's add a fillet. Pick my round tool, pick an edge, and I might want this to be, say, say 04, something like that. Very easy to put a round on. However, you'll see how the round climbs very high on one side and is very low on the other side. What if I wanted it to be a little bit more consistent? Well, let me show you a neat way to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insert after the revolve. Pick then the surface geometry, edit, offset, and I'll specify a value, say, uh, let's say 040. Middle mouse. I'll then come back just before the round and ask now for an intersect between this newly created offset and the quilt of the blade. Edit intersect. Then I can take this offset surf, hide it, and when I put the round back and edit its definition, I now have a curve there that I can use. Right click, through curve, I'll pick that curve. Now the round goes through that offset curve. So it's just as high on one side, or the round is just as high on one side as it is on the other.
This concludes part two of surface modeling techniques and I hope a little of this made sense to you. My name is Leo Green and hope to see you again on the next installment of PTC Express Video Tip of the Month. So long now.